que sería la instalación bien, si please. Es que dejáis que el miembro se ve con el Hello everybody! Welcome to Israel after a long hours of flight and uh, you know the luggage. Now, now let's be serious. Uh, I want to welcome you everyone uh, in my country, in our country. Also, mein Eindruck ist natürlich ganz bombastisch. Ich bin das erste Mal da. Wir sind ja einige Leute, die wir schon lange kannten und uns freuen, die wiederzusehen. Das ist schön. Du ja. hast recht. <lacht> We are going to, uh, you know, Israel is almost uh, a desert, and uh, we are going to the northest, no, uh, southest, sorry, to the southest uh, point of uh, in Israel, in Ilad. There is the the, the, uh, the Red Sea there, and uh, we will go also to the Dead Sea, which is uh, the lowest point on Earth. Uh, there is very salty water there and you will have so much fun. It's very good for the skin, for the ladies especially. <laughs> they will like it so much and uh, also we're going... They can also make a massage. Yeah, you can make a massage. That's I will give you a massage, Luisa. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> and uh, after that we're going to go to Jerusalem. So, uh, welcome time. again, enjoy your time, be happy, you can get some sleep now because you're so tired that you, you see, so... <laughs> and uh, thank you. Bye. 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 Ich 
And it's very hot. And if you think you come, you will be coming here soon. Please don't bring any clothes. You won't need them. It's very hot. <laughs> You can see most of the desert, the, the Negev, is from the basic stones, from the granite. Nice place. Um, I know a song in German. Alle meine Enschen schwimmen in dem See. I don't know how to say it with the right accent, but Köpfchen in den Wasser, Schweinchen in die Erde. One of the kind of the trees which succeed to live on, on the desert. It's mentioned on the Old Testament, on the Bible, as from uh, this tree, uh, Abraham made his uh, tent. It's a shita, I don't know really in English. 
But you don't have many kind of trees on the desert, so it is one of the famous that you can find it on the where you have the chance to have water on, on the valley when you have water. Um, in your opinion, does Israel belong to Europe or not? Um, I think uh, not. Um, I, I think that Israel has his, uh, all, um, his own country, his own um, life, is his own culture, his own uh, authority. But it doesn't really belong to Arabian countries too. Um, also, I'm thinking that. Um, and I think that it's um, because uh, Israel is uh, a new country, uh, it's um, become uh, uh, before 60 years, and I think that um, the Jewish uh, people has uh, her own, uh, I don't know, her own uh, area. Yeah, it depends from either side you look at. That means uh, geographically, Israel is, a, is an Asian, Asian country. Uh, in terms of politics and culture, I start with politics. I think Israel is more oriented to the United States and some of the Europe countries are closer and some are f f further from the United States. So if you look at the con com connection between Israel and the United States, they are closer than Israel to Europe, but still in the constellation in the world now, some of the Europe countries also are in the same attitude or in the same stand. In, term, in terms of culture, I think the Israeli population is too heterogeneous. So, uh, some uh, many of the people uh, have European origins, and about the same amount have like uh, Asian, South African origins, and there are many immigrants from Russia, from Ethiopia and from other countries, so you cannot say about the Israeli culture is homogeneous. They try to be Western, but there is no one mainstream. Benvenuti a tutti.
I talked about the Jewish community in Israel. It is not homogeneous. All right. But again, we have 20% of the community of the population in Israel are Arabic-speaking people. Mm -hmm. And these are also not uh, homogeneous. They, are, they belong to three religions mm -hmm. or three communities, mm -hmm. Muslims, Druze, and Christians. And the Muslims are the majority from this minority. That's me and 15% of that minority or 14% are Muslims. And the others are Jews and uh, Christian. So it is very, very heterogeneous in many terms, the Israeli population. Well, I'm from Akko and I live um, among Jewish and uh, uh, diverse uh, Arabic people and um, I, well, until the events from a couple of, a few months ago, months ago, we didn't have problems, but um, I don't know now. It's a bit difficult to say because uh, it really confused me what happened and, um, but usually, no, it's fine. It's okay. It's just uh, the government who uh, who sets things that uh, against Arabs and Arabic people, and uh, or sometimes you see like uh, there are just villages for uh, Jewish and uh, no Arabic people are allowed to live there because because the people there don't don't want their kids to be revealed to Arabic people to Arabic tra traditions and uh, ethic. So. Uh, this is uh, how it goes. For for Muslims and Christians in the Arabs, in the Arab uh, villages and towns, is so common that uh, sometimes you can't feel it. You can feel there is he he's a Muslim and he's a mm -hmm. Christian because it's from a long time ago. Uh, the Jew Arab the Jew Arab mixture is still uh, not so common, uh, or when it's when it's uh, there, uh, when it's existing, uh, you, you still feel that uh, there, is, there is a difference between a Jew and Arab. So, but, uh, but it's still there. There are, there are some towns like uh, Nazareth, like uh, Akko, yeah. like Haifa, which uh, contains the, both Jews and Arabs. Okay, Arab, Arabs, basically live in separate places. That mm -hmm. means separate uh, towns and villages. Mm -hmm. There are some mixed towns, about maybe five or six. We are mm -hmm. talking about Jaffa, Haifa, Jerusalem, Lod Ramle. There are a few and they, they are mixed, but the majority are Jews. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, all the Arabs uh, live in separate places. They have even a separate educational system.
I have of Jews, they are um, they are aware of what's going on, what happened, and what what uh, what is the situation between us. And um, some well, some of them are uh, who I can call friends. They are like they uh, they are like me. They can put themselves in the other side and try to understand what am I feeling and what uh, are they feeling. So there's a common understand between us. So. Uh, uh, we understand each other and we want peace. But, like, sometimes, from some Jews, not all of them, like, you feel that they distinguish between you and between other people. You can feel it, but you can be sure that they hate you or something. But, um, in general, you find some nice people, some nice Jews. Um, personally, I have a um, few friends, like, I met in summer camps and they are nice but they we need to to give them a message that we are not like terrorists or we are not uh, people who can hurt if you give them this message message they their idea about us will totally change and they will behave us behave with us in a different way my uncle is married for a jewish, a jewish woman and uh, he got a girl from uh, from here, so yeah, there are, I have uh, friends, uh, Jewish Jewish friends. Uh, I'm also have a Jewish friends, and my parents uh, was talking with Jewish, and we get to Jewish, and uh, we have many things with Jewish. Yeah, in our area, the we are live uh, Muslims and Christian and Jewish people. We live to all us together. Even we are uh, work for each other and talking sometimes we are going to see each other. And it's uh, very important to have uh, different uh, friends uh, in different opinions. Is there any discrimination against Israel Arabs by Jewish people? Of course. After everything, yes. Well, you see um, discrimination by finding work, uh, workplaces, by um, getting, uh, getting into universities. They make it tougher and tougher. But let's, let's take, for example, the psychometric exam. Like Jewish, they have the, their first language is Hebrew, and their second language is English. We, and their exam is Hebrew and English, and math. We, um, we have our first language is Arabic, and second is Hebrew, third is English. And our exam is, uh, is uh, Arabic and English. So what's my chances as a person to get uh, as high score as a Jewish person uh, like me, you know, they have more more possibilities to get into the universities, 
and not, not to mention that we they have uh, that you must sometimes add subjects you must uh, you must have been um, finished army and I'm not willing to go to the army just to get to uh, to get into this subject in the university or to be respected by a Jewish person. I want to be respected as myself, Arabic person. Uh, these two separate systems, uh, I think they have different resources. They got different levels of resources, even though in the recent years some improvement mm -hmm. have been occurred, but still they are, they are, there is a gap between the resources we get from uh, the government. The other thing is the level of achievement in the Arab system, because it is, I told you, it is separate from the Jewish system until high school. Mm -hmm. the, the achievement of Arab stu uh, pupils, students, are lower uh, than the Jewish. And when I said lower, it is, there is a lower, large gap between both communities. There is only a gap in the people accepted at the universities. That means the amount or the percent. If you, we talk about 20% of the populations are Arabic speaking, at the universities, maybe the amount of the proportion of students is about six, an average six to seven percent from the students. And some faculties, they are like one percent, two percent, mm -hmm. like medicine and the elite uh, faculties. In terms of the teachers at universities, the professors at the universities, the proportion is lower. Then that means uh, less than one percent of the staff at the universities are Arabs. So you see that there is a, a lot of disadvantage. They should focus on the situations in the towns and the villages because there is mess in the towns and villages. Like in my village, um, too many troubles happen. Uh, guys shooting other guys, uh, fights, and the like. The police uh, never intervenes. Like when the like if a fight happens between guys, young guys. They wait until it finish, and they then come and ask few questions, and they would be gone without doing anything. <laughs> As an Arabic person, do you have to go to the army? I'm not, uh, I'm not composer. Uh, it's not composer on me, but if I want, it's an option for me. I can go. Not every Arabic. There are Arabics who must go in some Arabics, like uh, the Israeli government divided us Arab, Arabic people so they can like um, make us uh, fight with each other and you know vanish each other in some way uh, they like made um, the there's uh, there's you know that there's Muslims and there's Christians and there's also Badu the ones who live in the desert and you know move from time to time Druze. and there is the Druze yes the Druze is um, um, it's an it's exceptional yeah some of the Badu they must go to uh, to the military uh, of Israel and some of the, and the, all the Druze, they have to go. Even my, our teacher, some, uh, our teacher, he's Druze, he's uh, Druze, and he, um, he refused it, and he went to jail also, because he refused it. <laughs> and uh, he stopped, and he got us home back. Stop it, man. There has been a proposal about social service that you can make instead of the army. National service. Uh, they tried, like, uh, you get some privileges if you do this. Mm -hmm. And like an Arabian, if you, they say, okay, if you don't want uh, the army, 
then you you must do social service but it was refused by the Arab people that because they said that I'm not obligated to do army so if I don't go to army then I'm not I'm not breaking the law so I, why should I be punished for not going to the army and making uh, two years of social service or such a thing and it's not working for me it's working for Jewish people I mean you can see it by law you, no, just uh, Jewish people who wants to return to uh, Israel, they can. I mean, Arabic people are not, they can do that. Uh, refugees, 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 refugees can do that. The ones who are, um, who got out of uh, their land uh, 60 years ago, they cannot do that. And suddenly a Jewish who, who suddenly know about Israel, there is something like it, and I want to go there, I want to live there. Yeah, let's go. I think the military absorb much a big part of the resources in Israel. That's mean in the Israeli budget. I think the military is the is number one in terms of budget. Then the other things. So when we talk about education and said, okay, we don't have enough money for education because we have to do this and this and this in the elementary. And the military is the big part of Israel. That's mean in terms of resources and in terms, also in terms of power. Uh, because also the military service is a requirement for many jobs. That means one of the requirements of many jobs in Israel is military service. Because of that, going to the military and have a good position in the military is a key to have a good job in the public or in the civil world. So it has a lot of power.
It is difficult to think about Israel without allies, because look at Israel. It is like surrounded by countries that the relationships and the best uh, con definition is like cold, like the peace with Egypt and the peace of Jordan, and then you have Lebanon, and uh, we have Iraq first, and then Iran, etc. And you cannot live in a country that devote a big, a large part of its resources for military. And this is what we have here in Israel. With the support of allies, that means the support from the United States and other places, I don't think Israel will need it if a peace will be created, a real peace will be created. So this kind of effort and uh, resources can be devoted to something better. When when Israel came and took like took the Palestinian land with the help of uh, Britain, it uh, it like it didn't stop there. It just took this land and continued to take other lands. It didn't stop where they thought that this is their land, their land, yeah, and they just keep, keep, kept uh, taking other land where Palestinian in Palestine nowadays. And so this is why I think it's a bad idea. But it um, depends. Maybe th those Jews are good people and they want peace and they want to spread the peace where pa Palestine is now. And their idea of living there is to make like um, um, a peaceful world, world between uh, Jews and Arabs living together with peace. Maybe. I might consider that as a good way, but today I, I, I don't really see that as a as a peace, as a way of peace. Solution. As a solution, yeah. That's what I think. Families get more benefits in the West Bank rather than on the east side of Israel if they want to build a house. Is that true? You know, I am not familiar with the policy in there, but I think they make life easy for people to get land and to build their houses there. In fact, many because of that, not all of the people who are living there uh, live there uh, because they have an ideology that this land belongs to us, etc. Some of this because it is easy and it is cheap, mm -hmm. so they can offer, they can afford themselves a good flat, a good living, uh, without paying a lot of money that they don't have. Uh, basically, I think because it is the policy. That's mean if the government. Uh, support these people because they have these extreme parties in the coalition and the government because not all people in the government support these things but they forced to because the coalitions and the uh, power of these small parties when you uh, create the government so until now they support them they secure them by the army so they have good life and practice.
convocation, um, it would be, but uh, for uh, the, you know, for <clears throat> the Salih, for the, for the, the good, the, the good. for the good of Israel, for the good of Israel, if, if it want to be, uh, you know, that's a settled country, no, no arguments about it. It's like it depends on what uh, what program is Israel um, planning. planning to uh, in this way that Jews live in Palestine, because if it's if it's uh, it wants to keep taking land, it will keep like uh, it will it will uh, make lots of problems than it is than we have today nowadays. Yes, there's many possibilities. Maybe they they want us they want to take. All Palestine, okay. Palestine is Israel become becomes an Israel, and so they treat the Palestinians like Arabs in Israel. And maybe after 50, 60 years, they will become like us, who have this uh, quarrel. Am, either am I Palestinian or I'm uh, Israeli? Yeah. Palestinian <laughs> with my ancestors, and uh, Israeli with the identity blue card. You know, this uh, this will be, uh, or or either they will take Palestine. And you know, just want to defeat all the Palestinians and build a new Israel for Jews, as they say. Do you know how it is? Like, it's white, blue, white, and there is the star and the blue. Yeah. You know the flag. Yeah. It's uh, it resembles that the blue line the in the down and the down the lower blue line yeah. is the Nile River. Ah, Neil. Neil. Oh, okay. Okay. And the upper blue line is uh, Forat in Iraq. Al Forat. Yeah. What's that? Al Forat. Called. It's, it's a, also a river. Oh, okay. Also a river. Yeah, in uh, Iraq, yeah. Al Forat. Mm -hmm. So it's like from Neil to Al Forat, it's all the star, which is for it's, Jews. It's, yeah. it's it's the big aim of Israel. It's Israel is. From this river to this river, this is the holy land of Israel, and this is what what they are uh, like planning to capture uh, or to be uh. in the future. You know, there is a, there is a, uh, I think there is a policy in not to have a continuation of Arab settlements in any place in Israel. So when they put their new settlements, they put them in between Arab places. And in fact, in this area, in the Galilee, uh, the Arab population is big, mm -hmm. so they try to encourage people to come and live in the Galilee. Jewish people like speaking. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, 
It would be impossible for me to imagine me, uh, a, let, I don't want to say in, uh, out of Israel, out of my land, out of my home, out of my village maybe, if, if, I, if I want to, don't want to be larger like in Israel or Palestine. It was Palestine, now it is Israel, but I'm in my land, you see. I think that uh, um, that the Jewish also have the right to to live in a country and have uh, her uh, authority and uh, to protect her culture and protect her uh, children and protect her families. And uh, and on another side, I think that uh, the Palestine have the same right uh, and uh, and it's all the people. And we're talking about the the humans right and all the uh, both of the sides is the humans <laughs> state solution would be would be the best for uh, let's say temporarily for a period of time and then uh, one country will conquer the other uh, definitely because because uh, 
though there is two two states, but each one <laughs> wants the the half of the other. So so it will so the quarreling will will, will continue for more I, even if the solution uh, been let's say been decided. Uh, it will continue to be quarrels here or there. I I didn't expect Netanyahu to change his mind in one day because Netanyahu is known as oriented to the uh, right wing. Uh, anyhow, it is also the same problem because these people in his coalition, that's mean he has these extreme parties in his coalition that think that with the a holy, the whole Israeli Jewish land or something like that. And uh, Eretz Israel Hashlema, a complete Israeli land. That means also the West Bank and even Jordan. But it is not realistic. So if he did not agree to those states, now he announced they agree. What other solution he has? He cannot continue to occupy these millions of people. And it is like no way to continue the situation. If he has some kind of solution, he has to put it on the table. He cannot like announce all these statements, he and other people. That means people who oppose something, I think it is better they give some realistic solution that can move the area ahead a little bit because they stuck in some place and it it is becomes worse and worse. So I think he said, okay, we agree to two states, but you have to put content in this statement to do something, to act, mm. and nothing happened except we will not stop the settlements and they said, okay, we will not create new ones, but we have to address the natural increment in the population. And it is tricky. That means you don't know what is going here. And in fact, we, since he is in government, we didn't see any movement actually toward any solution. And sometimes they have uh, these kinds of... Uh, uh, reasons or artificial reasons. I don't know if they are real or not. But if you want to move something, you have to look at the positive things and the way the places you can start to do something and to build any trust to continue. But if you we work with rhetoric and all the time we accuse this to be extreme or others to be extreme, it would it won't work. Sometimes somebody have to sit down and said, "Okay, that's it. We have to do something." Barack Obama, actually, in uh, in his uh, campaign, uh, elections campaign, I would like uh, I like to hear his uh, his uh, speeches. He got a perfect way of uh, expressing himself, and uh, his ideas were, were also conv convincing. Um, I don't know. My, I'm hoping the best of him. He may may be someone to bring peace all over the world, or or maybe not. So no one knows, but the hope is still there. So, I think in this uh, in this years in uh, with the Obama, I think maybe uh, uh, Israel uh, lose the uh, alias. A good alias that support him in the past, support him very well. It is, I believe, in the interest not only of uh, the Palestinians, but also the Israelis and the United States and the international community to achieve a, a two-state solution in which Israelis and Palestinians are living side by side in peace and security. Iran openly calls for our destruction, which is unacceptable from any standard. Right. Uh, well, listen, I... Uh, Do you think Jerusalem belongs completely to the Jews? It couldn't be. Because you have holy places for the three religions. And you know it. This is one thing. The other thing is you have a large population 
that belongs to other nationalities like the Palestinians and other Christians in there. So if you look just in Je on Jerusalem without thinking about it, you can see the diversity. It is not only Jews and you cannot just ignore the other part. I think the way the right wing in Israel and the extreme people uh, think that Jerusalem is one and they have the right to have this city as the capital of Israel. But uh, East Jerusalem until 67 is populated by Arabs mm. and I, be, until 67 and they start uh, building there but still there is another wing in Israel that think that it will be splitted to be two capitals but they do anything to put facts on the ground and to have the majority to be Jews mm -hmm. so there are a lot of problems like moving people out in legitimate way or in uh, unlegitimate ways etc and also I think the situation in terms of economics in terms of education in terms of infrastructure etc is very bad in East Jerusalem so they maybe some people think in this way they will push people out I don't think you can push a large population out in this way it is large and they have no place to go anyhow uh, who's been to Yad Vashem before, any of the people from Iblin, or you've been from Germany? So that's your second trip from Germany? The third. <laughs> the third? Yes. Oh, okay, that's right. And the subject is bottomless. You can talk about it for hours and hours and hours, and it's important to talk about it. And I'm not running away from it. But the, as soon as my, the Jewish side and the Arab side can limit the influence of the extremists on both sides, we'll be in a better situation. I read an article in one of the international papers about two months ago. Obama was already the president of the United States of America. And they said that sitting on Obama's desk, is this list of 10 suggestions of how to deal with the genocide that's happening in Darfur, Sudan. And that same list of 10 suggestions was sitting on the desk of the President of the United States of America for eight years before Obama, Mr. Bush. And Mr. Bush took that list of suggestions about Darfur and he did like this. He moved it from the center of the table to the edge of the table and he left it there for eight years. And he didn't do anything about it. So, I hope that the new president of the United States of America will be able to create a situation where Jews and Arabs can talk together more efficiently. <laughs> well said. Yes. The trouble is we can't do without politics because they 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 run the world. Yeah. Just, yeah. They do. We have to fight for them. That's right. Okay. In, 
for Jews, nationality and religion is the same. So it is difficult to separate these two. For the other religions, it could be, okay. But still, the, for the religious parties has, have a lot of power because they enter the coalition and determine the orientation, the political orientation of the whole government. It is very, very dangerous to change, to see this conflict as religious. Yeah. Because if it is religious, it will never be resolved. So I would believe that it is not. And it is like uh, conflict about land, water, borders, etc. It's absolutely the land, I think. There are many reasons, but I think the land comes first. Germany, like, I never thought that it would be like this sophisticated country. 
I thought it, it would be like normal country and uh, the register of the living life, like the living level is like lower than in Israel. Like I thought life in Israel is like much better and yes, we have our own problems, but I think I thought that in Germany there will be more problems and like I only know the only persons that I know from Germany is like the football players and like they are all the time mm, <laughs> angry or something and I took a bad a bad perspective perspective about the other Germans. <laughs> and, uh, I felt how it's to be in Germany and it's uh, so cool. I love it. And actually, in my, in I have I have this plan to get into here again, already. It's so beautiful country with all the scenes that we saw in the mountains, even the snow. <laughs> and uh, it was amazing because we, when we woke up at the first day, we uh, it was Easter, and uh, it was amazing to collect the the colored egg uh, eggs with yeah. Of the people who died here and threw their ashes in this kind of area, which sounds very extreme. But this is the only concentration camp, or was the only concentration camp that stood from 1933? Well, uh, actually for me, I, I, I heard uh, many things that I already know because we learned uh, about the Holocaust and about this subject in our schools. So I knew many things of what has been said, let's say, but, but it was most touching and I felt so sorry about, uh, about it. When I saw, when I saw the... <laughs> when I learned about it, I couldn't imagine what was happening of burning people or how they treated people or how people maybe live in uh, ghettos or something. But when I saw it in my eyes and I could see uh, the like uh, levels, you, you first wait for your death, then you get your clothes off, you get a shower of gas, and the, then you get into an oven to be baked or to be burned. That, that was so cruel in me that I, I could not... Uh, when, when I had a picture about how was that, that was so touching for me. And, uh, I perceived, uh, I perceived uh, the idea of uh, that that is so common and that it is so it is giving so much attention among the world. Well, to see furthermore uh, things about uh, the Holocaust or part of the Holocaust, it was also touching for me and uh, I felt compassion and sympathy with them, with the Jewish that were in that period, not with the, not, uh, not with the government, the Israeli government. And uh, it was really sad and it was to see these sadistic uh, actions by uh, Hitler and uh, to see the, what have they been through, the Jewish uh, people, it was really um, sad and painful to see, and uh, yeah. If I will see, for me, if I, if I put myself in a, Palestinian, in a Palestinian mind who does not have 
anything to eat, who is in the siege since two years or three years, who was not, uh, who's seeing his parents, father and brother killed next to him, lying dead, having no money to bury them even, you know, this, this will generate, I don't know what power will be generated in me, and then I'm not responsible what I'm going to do. So I, I can't decide if I would re-attack or, or not. But I'm not there, so I, I would not put myself, a, uh, so I would not decide for them. That's, that's the point. Uh, I think the one who got the power is the one who can stop the violence and the one he should do. Because he's the only one who can. It's, it's a saying that the strong is the strongest when he forgets. So you're saying the Jewish have to make the first step? Um, Towarding the Palestinians? Yes. Um, um, I think that the um, that we should live in a peace without uh, thinking about the difference between us because uh, each one has her, uh, her own uh, uh, religion and the other thing, uh, the other uh, uh, shared thing is to, to have uh, respect to each other and respect uh, the way they think. I think the good solution is to have peace and then to have two states. Because now without peace also everybody is like suspicious and they, had, they have no trust in each other. So you have to build all, all the trust to build a solution, to make peace and then everybody is eligible to have his freedom. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. 